Hello and good evening. My name is John, and I'm playing You Don't Know Jack. Once, XL. As always, I play these trivia games by myself, so I get less embarrassed. Really bad. Okay, you want to do a seven question game or you want 21? Oh, I want 21. Okay, got it. 30 seconds. Okay, there, heads up. Your buzzer's letter B as in butcher shop. Yeah. Skip. Oh, you guys are in a big rush, huh? No, I'm sorry to hold you up there. Uh, hold on. Let's get going. No, now. Let's go. How about it? Hit me with the category. Uh, Geeky Tower of Babel. The category behind this question is the Geeky Tower of Babel. Right here, one thousand bucks for a right answer. Imagine your friend sends you email about a computer virus that's been programmed to specifically seek out people with your first name. Which widely recognized symbol at the end of the email reveals your friend is only kidding? The exclamation mark, the colon and the closed paren, the colon squiggly right bracket and open, a colon and a closed parentheses make a little sideways smile. Wow, really? Used by people who spend too much time at their computer, but at least they're friendly. Not winky face? This is an old version. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Uh, we can work it out if you hand me those voice scripts. It's question number two. Here's the category. We can work it out if you hand me the vice grips. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. TV's Ward and June Cleaver govern their family so well, I bet they would have made great politicians. If Ward said to June, let's let the beaver work his problems out for himself. What type of political theory would he be demonstrating? Laissez-faire, totalitarianism, grassroots politics, or big government? I'm gonna go with laissez-faire. Laissez-faire, it means to let them do as they choose. Boom! In other words, play off the beef. Okay, um, pick a category. Cartoons and fancy weddings. It's question number three. The name in this category is Cartoons and Fancy Weddings. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. All my money. The word nay means by birth, or in more colloquial terms, formerly known as. Now, if each of the following cartoon characters sent out wedding announcements, which of these would be incorrect? Donald Duck nay Quacky, Mickey Mouse nay Mortimer Mouse, Goofy nay Dippy Dog, or Pluto nay Rover? Dicky? Nope. Mickey Mouse's original name was Mortimer Mouse. Oh man, that imitation sucked. Now the correct answer is Donald Duck has always been known as Donald. Oh, they wanted the wrong one. How about uh, it? Hit me with the category. Uh, that's life. Well, I won two in a row and lost it all. Such is life. Les affaires. The category, the fats of life. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. Get your eyes focused on the screen, here we go. Natalie and Tootie from the Facts of Life have decided to become professional boxers. If they each bulk up to 176 pounds, what professional weight class will they fight in? Heavyweight, welterweight, lightweight, or middleweight? It's not heavyweight. Yeah, lightweight, I think. Lightweight, that'd be like Arnold from Different Strokes. No. And here's the right answer. Walter? Heavy? Heavyweight. Once you're over 175 pounds, you're in. I'll what? Tell you, those second and third helpings of Mrs. Garrett's mashed potatoes really paid off for those gals. I was completely wrong on that one. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Your suit so two-dimensional. I'm Next bad at trivia. Up, you're so two-dimensional. The amount on the table is three grand. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Which of the following cartoon series is founded on anachronisms? Speed Racer, The Flintstones, Josie and the Pussycats, or Fat Albert? Anachronisms? Speed Racer? Go Speed Racer, no! <laughs> Here's what you should have guessed. The Flintstones. For example, cavemen did not have cars, not even ones they had to start with their feet. That doesn't explain why that was the right answer. Okay, pick a category. Uh, marketing ideas ahead of their time. Uh, test not slick crime store. It's time for a tingling test drop. Yeah. 
gibberish the category question. for this gibberish question marketing ideas ahead of their time five grand is the opening value for this gibberish question man cookie sounds now, so uninterested at this seconds level to solve this puzzle but i'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half now remember there's no screwing on gibberish questions ready put your fingers on your buzzers and tell me what does this rhyme with the whore mare yells horrific the whore mare yells horrific for a tent, it's from a product in the 70s. And it's not a moon ring, and it's not a pet rock. Oh, poor Marielle's horrific. It's for a product you use to clean your hair. So it's also not a lava lamp. Uh... Last tent, it's also a compliment. Dinosaurs. Well, I guess no one's ever said this to you. The poor Marielle's horrific. Gee, your hair smells terrific. All right. Listen, don't be depressed. Your nose still probably smells terrific. How about it? Hit me with the category. It smells like teen casualties? That's a little disturbing. The kerning is also be, very disturbing. It smells like teen casualties. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. If you wanted to arouse Robert Duvall's character from the movie Apocalypse Now, which of these fragrances should you wear? Thir yeah, he loves that smell of napalm in the morning. Easy. I mean, personally, I prefer it with I gotta a get some of, these. of Agent Orange Juice. Agent Orange Juice, please. Okay. Big Horny big problems. Wait, wait, elevate, hibernate, vegetate. The category is horny problems. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. One okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. You want to get into show business, but you want to be really different and choose an instrument that hasn't been overused. Which one is a possibility? The frugal horn, the crumb horn, the ant whistle, or the bilbo? Frugal horn. Frugal horn? Sorry, tightwad. Maybe you're thinking of the flugal horn. Oh, I was. Should have picked this. The crumb horn was popular in the 16th and 17th centuries, but I'm sure you can make it groovy again. I, yeah. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Get a Half Life. Uh, sure. Maybe it's about Half Life 3. Confirmed. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Get a Half Life. Okay, this one might be a toughie. It's worth 3,000 bucks. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Archaeologist Indiana Jones has dug up the remains of what he thinks might be Fred Flintstone. Which dating method will he probably use to determine the age of the remains? The old carbon-14 method. Yay! Although I'm not sure Indy's dad would approve of him dating a man so much older than him. Well. Wow. How about it? Hit me with the category. Roger Rabbit's Nocturnal Missions. Yo! The name of this category is Roger Rabbit's Nocturnal Missions. And this one's going to be worth $3,000. All right, let's see. Fearing an attack by the son of Judge Doom, the residents of Toontown set up a guard post at the city's entrance. If cartoon creatures share the same traits as their real-life animal counterparts, who of the following will be the best entry because he requires the least amount of daily sleep? McGilla Gorilla Sylvester Elephants. They sleep only about two hours each day. Oh, man, lucky elephants. A positive score again! Much better job than their first sentry. When Ooh. he woke up, his gun was gone, his hands were immersed in warm water, and his shorts were wet. Okay, we're at the end of round one, now on to round two. <laughs> now, we are one round away from the jack attack, and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round one. So pay attention, and let's do it. Let's do it! Okay, pick a category. Milton Bradley and Medical Procedures. Is this about, uh, Operation? The category oh, the behind this question Ooh. is Milton Bradley and medical procedures. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Mr. Potato Head is to plastic surgery as Pez is to blank. Uh, tracheotomy. Pez. Candy of the windpipe. Candy of the windpipe. That's great. How about it? Hit uh, the deviant barnyard practices. West truck licks nine more. Oh, not another Don't gibberish. It's time for a snicker click question. Gibberish question? This gibberish question's category is deviant barnyard practice. Ten thousand. If you're really fast, you can get up to ten thousand bucks for this gibberish question. 
Okay, to solve this puzzle, you gotta think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Now, let me tell you something. Some grisly things happen in agricultural communities. Now, tell me, what rhymes with this barnyard fiasco? Gory, hoary cattle, blue ya. Yeah, I'd rather not pick Gory, hoary cattle, blue ya. Hallelujah. Number one, it's a religious song. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Religious song. Gotta see what you got. Start typing and hit return when you're done. Glory. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, crap. I'm gonna get it wrong. I can't spell hallelujah. Oh, they gave it to me. Oh, that's really nice of you guys to not let me have to spell hallelujah properly. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Everybody kung fu fighting, but they're not falling down. The category. Everybody's kung fu fighting, but they're not falling down. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. Grasshopper, what is it that wobbles but does not fall down? Weebles wobble but don't fall down. Delights. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Because they have little round bases and weights. they it's really hit the physics. Blues. Then they can be down for two days. Star Trek. Okay, pick a category. The PC generation. Hopefully they mean a personal computer. Here's the category. Star Trek, the PC generation. A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. The Federation wants to be even more politically correct, so they decide to hire a differently abled French captain. When the hunchback of Notre Dame becomes captain of the Enterprise, ergonomics suggests the crew should do what? Throw him a big party and tend forward, start a bell choir. Ergonomics is about adapting the workplace to the physical needs of the worker. I'm... I'm For doing example, okay. Sheriff I'll probably lose in the right jack now, attack. Doesn't but. have any freaking lumbar support. Paparazzi and Fonzie, rock paper scissors, protect the. Let's do rock paper scissors and protect the new world. The category is Rock, Paper, Scissors, and Protectors of World Order. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4000 bucks. Do you know the rules of Rock, Paper, Scissors? Yep. Imagine that Rambo is a rock, James Bond is a paper, and Dick Tracy is a pair of scissors. What could happen in a battle between them? Rambo strangles Tracy, is shot by Bond. Bond covers Tracy, is crushed by Rambo. Bond's mother's Rambo cut in half by Tracy, or Tracy slices Rambo, is suffocated by Bond. Bond smothers Rambo. Cut in half by Tracy. Three. Bond smothers Rambo is cut in two by Tracy. Or in other words, paper covers rock, scissors cuts paper. Okay. Candy and Astronomer, characters that are whacked taking stock. Candy Astronomer. Sour cream. This one's gonna be Candied Astronomers. Six thousand bucks is riding on this one. Hang on tight, cause here we go. Galileo is considered one of the great minds of all time. If while he was alive you injected butterscotch into a cerebellum, what immediate result might occur? He might think he tasted butterscotch, he might start laughing, he might have an orgasm, or he might lose his coordination. He might lose his coordination. Don't want to inject butterscotch into people's brains. See, the cerebellum controls motor activity. If you poked it with something, your coordination might be affected. The butterscotch was just for fun. <laughs> All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Frat rap sheets or goddesses in their underwear. Let's do goddesses in their underwear. Oh, Next God, up, the kerning is really bothering me. Underwear. And this one Every time. 4K for this one. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Where would you find Venus's girdle? In water, under the bed, in the Milky Way, or wherever she left it? The Milky Way, right? Gonna have to dock you for that. Too bad you didn't pick this. In the water, it's a four foot nine sea creature that looks like a jellyfish, and it's got a cotton panel for added comfort. Huh. How about it? Hit me with the category. Barretta and reproduction? Don't know who that is. Hallmark cards and concrete clothes. Are you going to eat that? Taking a lot of twos. Wipe the slay clean. Number 18. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Are you going to eat that? And this one is not going to be easy. $6,000. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Which kind of caviar would an entomologist be interested in studying? Iranian caviar, Latin caviar, Mexican caviar, or Russian caviar? Uh, that's gotta be words, so be Latin? Latin? I said entomologist, not etymologist. Oh, there goes all my money.
Entomologists study insects, so they'd be interested in <laughs> Mexican caviar because it's made from waterfly larva. So, well, okay. movie mutants. The category behind this question is movie mutants. I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. As a screenwriter, you want to write a vehicle for Charles Bronson and Kevin Klein. If you were to combine the names of previous films they've made, what could the film be called? My Dirty Dozen Vinny, A Death Wish Called Wanda, The Big Pill, or Snow White and the Magnificent Seven Dwarfs? Uh... I have no idea. Uh... And let's see the correct answer. A fish called Wanda meets Death Wish. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll die. I have no idea. I should have guessed that one. How about it? Hit me with the category. How to look... Oh, by the way, my name's John. We're playing this for steam cleaning. I completely forgot that. But we're going with ca category three here. Just... The category. Ah! How to look your best in Kearney. outer space. It's going to be worth $4,000. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Which one of these Star Wars characters could benefit most from a depilatory? Jabba the Hutt Chewbacca. Removes hair. Yeah, depilatory is a hair remover. You could also use a Valium and a flea dip. All right, come on, hit me. You met the category. Who in the woods? Who's in charge here, Charles? Wait, is it the Jack and Jack? Is this... Oh, crap. Well. Time for the attack. Buzz. Oh, you already got the rules down. Huh? Oh, I know Jack Attack. Last time. Match on this. Who's in charge here? Lock that into your head. Now let's see how well you take charge of this. Fantasy Island. Must be Mr. Roker. Staleg 13. Korean War. Guinevere, Colonel Clink. Colonel Clink. Night Court, that would be. Judge Stone. Good show, Night Court. Camelot. That would be. King Arthur? The Bounty. Guinevere, Round Table, Captain Bly, Starlight 17, Guinevere. Jealous of Heart, Ranger Johnson. Mash. Colonel, Colonel Blake, I think. Hey, Mash 40, oh. I thought 4077 was the year. No. Okay, push the wrong button. Hey, not too bad. Hey, 30 grand. Pay it up. Well, you kick butt. No two ways about it. Of course, it's not like you had any competition to make it a real challenge or anything, but, you know, that's not the point. The point is... You don't know Jack. Thank you, Jellyvision! Um, okay, great show, everybody. I like the Jellyvision games. I'm not so good at them. These old ones are interesting because, of course, knowing trivia from previous eras is always tricky. Um, I wouldn't recommend thinking about any of these just because they're so old and the newer stuff is so good. But if you get a deal, maybe? But uh, this has been John, this has been Steam Cleaning, and I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.